All right, so we're beginning our organic chemistry unit. And the central figure of this entire unit is the element carbon. All right, carbon is the, is the element we're going to be talking about. It's, it's kind of the root of, of why this is such a, a diverse um, field of science. And the, the reasons are many, but mainly it's because of its structure. Um, carbon can take on, well, compounds of carbon can take on many, many shapes. And that's the key here, are these shapes that it can take. Now let's look at a carbon atom. Let's look at this atom here. This is carbon, six protons and six neutrons in the nucleus, two electrons in its innermost shell, and four electrons in its outermost or valence shell. This is the, the atomic structure. So why carbon? Why is, is carbon at the center of this story? Well, let's look at carbon. We said it has four uh, valence electrons as opposed to these others. Why isn't hydrogen the main character or nitrogen or oxygen? These are extremely important atoms for life. Uh, we know that um, carbon is a, a, a huge component of living things of, of the human body. So why aren't these the main characters? Well, carbon has those four valence electrons and they're unpaired. All right, so this valence electron is going to want to pair with another. This one's going to want to pair. So is this one and this one. So th the fact that it has those four valence electrons makes it extremely um, willing to, to bond in all directions. Whereas nitrogen has three valence electrons available. Uh, hydrogen only has one. Here's oxygen with two. Its other two are already paired up, so they're they're spent as far as bonding goes. So this is why it's so diverse. It has these, these four opportunities for bonding. And those four opportunities give it a lot of different uh, diverse ways in which it can bond. For instance, here's methane. All right, We have our, our carbons covalently bonded to one to each hydrogen. And carbon uh, typically um, is going to very rapidly and very readily covalently bond to other things. So when you see it in nature, it's going to have all of its bonding positions full. Um, they can be in this way. They can be in a chain, as we see here. Uh, they can branch in different directions. We see a carbon branching here. We see carbons branching up and down in this direction. These, these lines, as you, I'm sure you assume, these represent the covalent bonding, uh, the sharing of two electrons. Here we have double bonding events going on. All right? We have a double bond between these two carbons. We have a double bond between these two carbons. So in this instance, these carbons are sharing four electrons. So that's another element of diversity of carbon. You're going to see here you have the sharing of four electrons. So you have one fewer hydrogen. That's kind of a consequence of that. Um, over here in this molecule, we have a triple bond, so it's sharing six electrons, another um, very, very important um, element uh, in, in carbon's nature. And also it can form rings. These are ar aromatic rings. We have double bonds and single bonds in the rings. So you can see that these different molecules of carbon take on many different forms, many different shapes, and as I said before, the shape of these molecules is an extremely important um, factor in its diversity. We've always talked about the idea that form follows function. Well, well shape is, is extremely important in biology and, and chemistry as well, as we see here. Carbon, because it can take on many different shapes, forms many different isomers. So different carbon compounds have different isomers. And what an isomer is, is it's a chemical compound that has the same um, number of car number of elements, number of atoms, but a different structure. So you can see here, if we count the atoms, there are two carbons, two hydrogens, and two bromines. Same thing here, two carbons, two hydrogens, and two bromines. So the, the formula of this compound is the same, but their structure is different. So the fact that their structure is different is going to make them behave completely differently from one another. This is going to be a completely different compound than this one simply because of that change in structure. These two are isomers, they're structural isomers. Um, if we move over here, glucose, a major carbohydrate that we're going to talk about. C6, there's six carbons, 
There's 12 hydrogens, C6H12O6, and 6 oxygens for glucose. Fructose, same thing, C6H12O6, but you can see here they're structurally different. Same chemical compound, different structural makeup, so they behave completely differently. The shape is different, the behavior is different. These are isomers. Once again, butane, four carbons going across. Same for isobutane, but we have one of the carbons instead of being in a branch of four, where the, the, the longest branch of carbons is four, the longest branch of carbons in isobutane is three. So the behavior is completely different. This is an isomer. All right, so that's basically it. It's because of those reasons, it's because of the, the bonding events, the, the versatility of carbon in the way that it bonds is going to make it, give it the ability to form all kinds of different organic molecules, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. And we're going to move forward and talk about each one of those organic molecules individually.